Welcome to the Vedic Way. For those who have been on this journey, those who are joining fresh, the Vedic Way is a unique way for a soul to dwell on earth in a truly liberal, open, relaxed way in the knowledge that I am one with the divine essence and that divine essence does not belong to one people or even humans, but is truly unalloyed existence, sat, unalloyed intelligence, chit, and unalloyed joy, ananda. Sanskrit was the language in which these great universal, truly nurturing truths were expressed. And these truths are for us to revisit and to contemplate upon them and to begin leading a life of inner expansion, inner awareness. The Vedas are so ancient. They are deemed as the most ancient tradition uh, on earth, just from a historical timeline. And something that is so ancient when it is revisited and translated in the modern world, it can sometimes become diluted or distorted from its original essence. In the case of the Vedic tradition, what has happened is that Different fruits from that grand tree have been plucked and enjoyed, and they are blessing countless beings all over the world. But imagine if you didn't just have a single fruit, like a, a mantra here, or a 10 minute meditation here, or a, a chakra activating color here. But what if you had access to? the roots of this tree? What if you had access to the strength of its trunk? What if you had access to the buds and the buds could ripen and flower uh, into different qualities and talents and strengths within your being and become wholesome fruit, not only for you to enjoy, but that which make you a fruitful, beneficial traveler through earth, benefiting from this wisdom and then giving back from this wisdom. So really the invitation that I hold every single time is for you to be with this wisdom and see if it makes you a better Christian, a happier Jew, a joyous Sikh, a relaxed Buddhist, a self-assured atheist or agnostic. It does not matter. The Vedic tradition nods and respects to religion, but shows us the path to spirituality. And what we've been looking at is this concept of an out-of-box divinity that really goes beyond name, form, gender, culture, story, and dwells in every particle of sand, every nook and corner of this existence, and yet transcends it. We are looking at a concept of divinity that is existence that never really goes into non-existence. Universes can come and go. Planetary systems can rise and collapse. Stars can burst, become dark holes, and then become something else. But that original existence that holds all of this 
phenomena of of existence, change, and transformation, but itself does not undergo any change and transformation. That is the concept of what we know in the Vedic way as Ishvara. Pure, unalloyed, unending existence because it has no beginning either. No beginning, no end. It is not alone. It is not aspected by time. There never was a time when that was not present. There never was a time that that did not witness. There never was a time that that did not be. All the becoming happens in the lap of that being. And that being is, is in you, in me, in a tiny caterpillar, in a happy dove, in the fishes. That original being is therefore nameless and bodiless because it is boundless. That beautiful divine existence and that being is not just a human being or a cat being or a lion being because that beingness is beyond our comprehension. But what we can appreciate is that that existence, that divine truth is within each one of us. And this intelligent existence is the intelligence that we find reposed in a single cell, in a single atom, in the quantum field of the galaxies, millions and billions. How planets stay on their orbits, how a child knows how to suckle its mother's breast, how a rock knows how to be a rock, and a daffodil, a daffodil. This intelligence is all reflected intelligence of that original existence. The substratum is intelligent. And ultimately we are promised it is joyful because when we have seen that we return to an essential nature, when we return back from the scheming and shenanigans of our ego mind and we just close our eyes and repose for a few moments, what do we find? Well-being, contentment, okayness, wholeness, joy even. So joy is not just giggling, cheerful laughter or, or, or a spark that comes from chasing one pleasure after another because all pleasures wane at some point. But joy comes from when nothing is sought and what nothing is lamented that is lost. Joy is a deep sense of okayness despite the change. And that happens, we find it within ourselves. We find it um, in nature. We find it when we lie down on earth and smell the grass. Everything has a light known as bhati. Everything is reflecting light. Everything is priyam, reflecting some, some attractiveness. This is all qualities of that original thing, that original existence. But it, is it a thing? Is it a being? Who knows? And the Vedas say, don't bother. Don't bother because it is in everything and every being. That truth has many terms and there are many pathways to reach it. Let us continue exploring that truth known as Ishwara. Ishwara comes from the root sound Isha or Isham, which means the inner authority, the inner intelligence, the inner truth that dwells in all things and all beings, it's all-pervading, 
omnipotent, omnipresent. There are no haves and have nots. Religions are ways to define that Isha in their own way. But ultimately, it is the Vedas that beautifully show a pathway to words, a state of union or closeness or familiarity with that Ishwara. Not just an intellectual knowing, but a spiritual and emotional fusion. Not just participation in its creation, not just devotion as in a super lord or a super god or a deity, but truly as your own highest self. Those pathways are known as yogas. Each year I will explore a yoga and then come back to that yoga again so that over a period of few years you would have traversed those pathways and benefited from your proximity with that supreme power and become as a result empowered from deep, deep within. As we continue to explore the first pathway, the pathway of bhakti, today I unfold to you, my dear members and guests of the Vedic way, some images from our tradition of really how to be a bhakta. Bhakti comes from the root word bhaj as a reminder. And bhaj has many connotations, but it includes affection. It includes devotion. It includes uh, the love of a beloved towards the ones, to the one that they remember and are fond of. Bhakti Yoga is a series of explorations into how can we, in the very beginning stages of this exploration, truly develop and cultivate a relationship with that divine, all-pervading light, intelligence, truth, consciousness, from a simple childlike place of innocence, sweetness, and gradual shraddha or trust. So that when we are challenged, when we are bleeding from the impermanence and transience and disloyalty and disturbances of our uh, manifested adventure, we can return to the roots of that tree and become grounded in knowledge, in the light of knowledge, become steady despite the winds swaying us in different directions. I remember my guru chanting and he would chant, uh, <clears throat> and he would and he would remind us that there was this there is this special tree known as the Ankola tree. And this Ankola tree has a uniqueness when its flowers shed the seeds. Interestingly, the seeds don't seem to want to travel far. Those seeds want to go back into earth and join the roots. So it's, they're circular. It's very interesting that it, 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 it flowers into seeds, it sheds seeds, and the seeds fall back in, onto earth, penetrate the ground, deep dive, and join the roots, and feed the roots. And it is its own mechanism to survive. But from a spiritual perspective, it really is 
a representation of looking for our own divine roots, is it? 